Hey everybody, Sarah at Nova Motorcycles. And uh, this week we have a pair of very special race bikes. Um, as you can tell, weather's a little blustery, a little misty, and uh, that's perfectly fitting for these two bikes. I uh, have a pair of English motorcycles, so they hopefully feel right at home. Uh, these are both a pair of, uh, they're each a 500cc Triumph racing twin. Um, these two bikes were owned by a very special friend of ours who just passed away this year. Uh, and uh, his family has brought them over here for us to kind of go through them again so that his daughter and his son-in-law and his uh, and some of their friends can get them back on, on track this year. So uh, that's a little bit of the history with them. And, uh, and before we get into that, we also have a little more history with them. Our very own Bailey has ridden both of these bikes at the Tower Hill Climb in Laconia, New Hampshire during Bike Week. Uh, it's coming up again this year. It's the Tuesday of Bike Week, whatever day that is, June uh, 11th, I'm going to say, but double check your calendars. Uh, it's a paved hill climb, uh, so it's for street bikes, kind of 1960, late late 60s and, and earlier for the most part, although 70s ones that are cool are also allowed in. Uh, but our club runs it, the USCRA, only let in the coolest of the bikes that we have and the people that we know. So one year there was an early teens uh, Excelsior Henderson running there. And there's also stuff like like these. Um, Bailey won her very first time out on this one, and then the following year uh, competed on this one. Did not win, but I think still did uh, pretty darn good. Uh, so pretty cool. This one, there's a photo somewhere of her with the wheel lifted coming over the top of the finish line at the top of the hill, um, and uh, she was she was flying. It was pretty cool. Um, so our buddy Brian was big into racing. Uh, he he, um, you know, good friend of our shop. He raced a sidecar. He raced uh, for, the, for the, when, when I've known him. Uh, he's been racing sidecars. Earlier, he was racing uh, solo bikes and stuff um, when he was a little bit younger. Um, and uh, he was always, you know, a, someone a big member of the club. Uh, always volunteering. Always doing tech tech inspection. Whatever the club needed, he would show up, even if he wasn't racing, just to help out and to volunteer. Uh, so great example of, of uh, what it, what the kind of effort it takes to do something like vintage racing, which is pretty labor intensive in all regards, uh, from riding to managing it to, to, to running it, all that stuff. Um, he'd been working on these bikes uh, for a while. I don't know the story of when he got each one, uh, a lot of the details. Uh, I do know that I've been against him on track with this one, and I've seen him run this one on track, but I haven't, I don't think I ran against that one. They both sound amazing. Um, as far as what they are, they're they're late 500s. So they both have they both have the primary breather, which is a late Triumph thing, the final model of the parallel twin. Uh, Triumph kept making the 500s into the later 70s, past when they made the 650s um, and the and the, the dry frames. Even when the other 650s and then 750s moved to the oil and frames, the 500s were still running the dry frames. So you see in oil tank um, this one. Uh, believe these are early 70s but again i haven't run the vin numbers on the serial numbers on the engines to check and most likely they're made out of bits of, of different different years anyway so it doesn't uh doesn't quite matter um the the aluminum tanked one here is you know looks a little bit more racy than this it's it's more of a, a gp replica perhaps got the fairing on it cheriani these are the road race cherianis really nice italian period uh, forks um, the motor is built up, hot cams. You'll see that this, this red line here is about 8,500 RPM, which is kind of ridiculous for any kind of British, uh, British bike, uh, push, rod, <laughs> push rod twin. Anyway, uh, so the, the racing ones can do it, but again, they have to be built for it. If you try to take your Street Triumph up to that level, you will, uh, you'll be seeing us and the mechanic fairly soon. Uh, it's running the Mark II Amos, the latest, the last line of uh, Amol carbs. Uh, much more like a Makuni of, of the 80s that you'd see. These were a 70s carb into the early 80s. Um, but a much smoother carb than the earlier ones. Uh, they actually flow pretty well. So a lot of people like to like to change to them. Uh, you've got, obviously, a racing seat, a custom racing tank, a, a fabricated oil tank, beautifully handmade. You can see the, uh, the weld lines on the on the tank. Sh uh, non shoulder excuse me. You've got a, a alloy rim in the front, shouldered in the front front uh not in the back so a little bit mismatched again that's that's normal for race bike stuff and then this brake you'll notice this uh wonderful detail on this very large uh brake here this is a um this is a four leading shoe and you'll see that the the uh the vent holes are taped up the reason that they had to do that is because this brake was made to stay cool on the long gps of the old days and like riding the tt and uh you know races that were that were very long maybe at least an hour if not more of running so the brakes would get super hot and overheat 
on our races where we're doing eight laps that are, you know, each lap is two, uh, ooh, no, long track is two miles or, you know, loud is about 1.7 miles. Canaan is 1.3 miles. There, there literally isn't enough time for that break to heat up. So what he did is just taped up the cooling line. So the <laughs> cooling, cooling uh, passageway. So the brake uh, doesn't get cooled off, therefore stays at temp when he needs it. Uh, kind of a funny thing. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, what else can you say about it? I, I think this is a really beautiful period uh, correct racer. And when I say period, uh, this is a period one bike, which means uh, period one is the racing period from the say mid 50s until the late 60s. 68, 69, uh, 67, 68 is a generally accepted cutoff for period one. And it tends to be push rod motors, drum brakes. They have to be drum brakes. Um, and uh, only a few overhead cams were in use at that time. So most of what, uh, you know, the Japanese uh, vintage stuff doesn't qualify for, for period one, typically, with, with some exceptions. Um, so on this bike, another period one racer. This one's a little bit more of a privateer style. Somebody, something somebody might take. They might take their street bike and just, you know, flip the bars over or put these club ins on them. It's not slap on the number plate, but nothing fancy like that. And... Uh, and head to the track. Now, it's not quite that simple. Also has the beautiful Cherianis. Also has a really nice, uh, looks like a John Tickle front brake on there. I'm not 100% sure, but that is a nice, nice piece here. That yeah, sure is. Um, and, uh, you know, so that's some, that's more than the factory, uh, factory kit. Some nice bolt on goodies for sure. But in general, it's a much simpler bike. Uh, he was running Makunis, so uh, also not the stock Amels but uh, just some, some basic Makuni VM carbs, which well, work great on these things. And, uh, and the high pipe from a, a scrambler. So you see we're up here on the side of the bike here. And, and again, a super trap, both bikes running the super traps because uh, unlike the glory days, there are sound regulations at race courses now. So if you show up with your open megaphones, uh, it sounds really cool for a minute, but the neighbors, they don't like you so much. Uh, and you might be asked to leave the track. That's happened <laughs> a couple of times to people in our club. Uh, you'll see the use of a paint container for the belly pan on this guy down low. Fully acceptable, not as not as glamorous as a nice handmade piece, but uh, the most important thing is to have a catch a belly pan there to catch any oil that may come off as you're running, or if your motor did blow up, you catch your most of your oil in that and absorbent mats in there to to keep it good. Um, yeah, uh, just another you know period cool machine. Um, I have always had a fantasy of, and if you know, if you watch this, I'm very slowly building a Veliset race bike. I've always had a fantasy of having a couple of vintage British bikes uh, to ride. A, because of the difficulty means if you, if you finish the race, you did a great job. But B, the sound of them is just so cool. It's a period that um, they honestly can't, it's very hard for them to compete with Japanese stuff of the late 60s, early 70s. But the sound of them is just amazing. The 360 degree cranks on these things. Going through even the super trap, um, you know, get the, get them revving up high enough. They just sound sound beautiful. Uh, the mechanical noise from the push rod motor. It sounds like a racket, but you know, to me, it's a, it's it's something that's that's pretty special. Um, and in the right hands, they can be very 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 good very good bikes. And something like this with it with a really built motor in it, the aluminum tanked one, that is competitive against a lot of things. Um, so uh, you know, they're really. They can be made to be really nice, but they're they're always dealing with older technology. So there's something a little bit sorry behind the eight ball with any kind of old Brit bike uh, compared to what a lot of people are running in the vintage scene. But so I like the opportunity to have these in the shop. We'll uh, when we get them fired up, we'll definitely take some video of them, each one, getting them running, um, and then uh, you know we'll have them back out on the track with with the, with the owners of them again uh, in the summertime. Um, if you have any experience with old British racing bikes, uh, please you know chime in. Um, you know, see these things you like. If you want to chastise me for leaving them out in the rain, don't worry. I'm going to go towel them off right now. But um, uh, yeah, anything else you, you, you know about these old things, try and 500s. If you have any experience tuning them any, you know, or blowing them up, trying to get them tuned, that kind of stuff. It's always fun to hear. Um, and yeah, that's that's about it. Um, uh, we're, we're very glad to have a chance to, to get a little experience with Brian again, having these bikes. He's a good friend of the shop and a, and a big part of our racing program. So Sad to see him go, but um, it's nice that little pieces, you know, stick around. Uh, thank you for watching. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to the channel and, you know, let us know what you think.